My name is Aka and welcome to my YouTube channel. I started making YouTube videos a number of years ago and previously I had done a get to know me video but it was not really an in-depth uh, introduction. So today I decided that I'm going to introduce myself to you guys, my subscribers. My name is Akambia Mwanza. I was born on the 28th of November 1988 in Kitwe. I was born to Dr. Patrick Mwanza and Mrs. Mwanya Maluti. My father worked in the public sector for a number of years and then he resigned and went to the private sector. He worked as an international consultant for a number of years. My mom was a public servant for more than 30 years. I'm the second born in a family of three. I have an older brother and a younger sister. Growing up, I was middle class. I'd be classified as middle class. We grew up in a nice neighborhood. Uh, my parents had good jobs and we never really, really lacked any of the basic necessities. We moved to Lusaka in 1991. And uh, when we just moved here, we lived in Olympia at first, and then we lived in Kablonga, and then in Ibex Hill. My parents still live there. So like I said, we were pretty middle class. Both parents worked. So I went to government schools, even though we did have the option to go to private schools. I found that being at a government school taught me to be humble. Uh, it taught me to use my initiative and importantly, it taught me to speak my local languages. Uh, I started my primary school at Chibelo Primary School and then I went to Kablonga Girls and then, uh, all right, let me just, okay, so I started my primary school when I was five years old in grade six. I decided to attempt the grade seven exam and I passed, made it to grade eight. At that time I was 10, I think I, yeah, I, was il I turned 11 in, in grade eight. And uh, primary school was pretty easy for me. My dad always made it a point to put academics first. So he would always buy us books. Mom as well, they'd buy us books. We'd go through the books at home. So when it was time for us to, to go through the books at school, we'd just go through them so smoothly because we'd already done the work at, at home already. So primary school was pretty, pretty easy for me and quite fun. Uh, I had lots of friends. Um, I wouldn't say I was popular, but as one of the younger children, I did tend to stand out. So I enjoyed my primary school. And the only reason I attempted to write my grade seven exams is because my best friend at the time who was quite older than me was also writing so I, I felt left out so I pressured my parents into letting me attempt and by I, I was a smart kid I made it but as soon as I went to high school now the trouble began I found that looking back now I was not mentally and emotionally ready for that environment because at high school the girls were you know they were more they were less childlike and they were more, you know, like girlish or more, I don't know how to say this. They were not very childlike. They were more, you know, they had boyfriends and all that stuff. And me, I was just there, still stuck on my uh, TBN, Kobe's Clubhouse, the Rapids, just, you know, those childlike things. Because I was still a child, I was 11. So I, I really struggled. I struggled emotionally and also my academics really suffered. I was not doing as well as I was doing at primary school. I think the change of the environment, even the, the learning pace was so, so drastic for me that I didn't quite adjust in time and I was doing very poorly. But by some miracle, I managed to make it to grade 10, still at Kablonga Girls. So uh, I made some good friends. Um, in grade 8 and 9 and one of them continued with in grade 10 so yeah I made some good connections and um, socially I was sort of improving but still not quite there academically I was still suffering so much I just could not seem to grasp what was being taught and looking back at it now I think I just learned differently the way the, the information was presented to me and the tasks I was required to do were just not exactly how I learn best. 
So perhaps if a different approach had been taken, maybe I would have done better. But no, I really struggled in high school. I, it was really bad. I wrote my grade 12 exams and as can be expected, I did so badly. And I expected the worst. I thought my dad would be so mad at me. I was expecting to be disowned and thrown out into the streets. <laughs> but miraculously, I don't even know how I... It's just grace. I don't know how it happened that my dad was actually very understanding and very supportive. My mom was a little bit more upset, but still she was supportive. That's just how my parents are. That's the environment that we grew up in. We always support each other. And we grew up being made to feel that our opinions mattered, our feelings were valid, and we were seen. It was a very avant-garde approach to parenting, I have to say. When I look back at in hindsight now, the way we were raised is not typically how children those days were raised. I think we're seeing more of that now. Like even with my children, I actively make the effort for them to feel a part of the... That's the, the sort of parenting, that the approach to parenting that I'm also taking with my children. I ask for their opinions on things, when there are big decisions in the family to be made. I ask for their input and... So I'm raising them that way because that is how I was raised. So it was a very avant-garde type of parenting in those days. It was children were seen and not heard, but for us were heard. So when I did badly in grade 12, my parents just convinced me to just go back and just redo the whole year. So I went to Lusaka Girls uh, and there I was actually thriving. I, I was doing very well in class. Uh, I felt confident and yeah, I made it, I rewrote and I made it to the University of Zambia where I did a bachelor's degree in adult education. I graduated in 2011. In 2013, I was deployed into the public service in Chipata district under the Ministry of Chiefs and Traditional Affairs. In 2015, I met my former husband. And he was the definition of a knight in Chinese armor. Literally, you know, when you go in the dictionary, look up knight in Chinese armor, all those characteristics, that was him. And I was going through a really bad breakup. Um, it was a situation where we broke up and I didn't even understand what the issue was. To this day, I don't really know what caused the breakup. We got on so well. We had so much fun together. But it was just one of those things. It didn't work out. So... With that background of being broken, being hurt, this guy came in. He was literally perfect. I mean, it was roses every day. He opens doors for you. He texts you good morning and good night. He calls you throughout the day to ask how you're doing. He shows interest in things that you're interested in. Um, he was kind and extremely intelligent. Very smart man. So, yeah, we started dating and quite soon he said he loved me. But um, I wasn't ready and I told him I'm coming from a really bad breakup and I'm not really in, in a place to love anyone right now. So despite telling him that, he was just very patient and very understanding and eventually he won me over. So in 2016, we got married and it was a very big wedding, which my parents paid for. I mean, it was limos. It was the two. I had two very expensive dresses. Um beautiful venue beautiful decor everything was it was literally the dream wedding complete with police sweepers and yeah it was it was yeah i had a perfect wedding yeah it was really nice but looking back at it now um the feelings i'm trying to get the feelings that i think i was just focusing on getting through that day and everything moving smoothly if you've had a wedding before you know that there's so many things that can go wrong during a wedding and some of those things happened to me well the 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 music system didn't show up at the church so there was no music i had no music to walk down the aisle to. <laughs> so the choir had to sing this uh <laughs> this song that was just not exactly what one might imagine one walking down the aisle to let's put it that way yeah so yeah we had the wedding in 2015 the same year i got pregnant 
and at the same time i was also accepted to do a master's degree at the university of zambia so that's three huge things that were going on uh my husband uh was, went to work abroad he's actually not from zambia he's from another country so he he got a job in west africa <clears throat> so as soon as the wedding was over he left to go to work I stayed here because I had the master's degree and I was pregnant and I had fibroids so it just was not the time for me to to move with him. So uh our marriage was pretty much a distant one. He came to visit every now and then. Yeah, but I never went to visit him. In 2018 now this this is the part of of this history that I'm very reluctant to tell. Um I prefer not to talk about this because I how do I put this I understand that my children are growing and in fact my son right now at 5 he's able to he can go on my YouTube channel and he can watch this video so I'm very particular about what words I use and how I choose to describe the separation with my husband in 2018 we ended up going our separate ways unfortunately it was not an amicable separation um and if i were to go into too much details it would not paint my former husband in a very positive light and from the beginning i always made it a point never to speak ill of him to the children never to try and sway their opinion of him in any way so i've always kept it neutral So I I've always I've chosen not really to delve into too much detail on this chapter but um it all boils down to there's infidelity in the marriage on his part um he chose to leave the marriage and go to this other person that he felt was he was more in love with and then later on he tried to reconcile with me and I just would not have it I was raised to to know my worth, to know my value, to have certain expectations of how I should be treated and how I should treat others and I felt that if I went back to him I felt that going back to him was not the sort of life that I deserved to to lead um I had lost trust in him. I had lost faith in him. In him, uh, I did not trust him. And to me, fundamentally, those are the three things that you need in order, at least, to have any semblance of a, a relationship that could possibly work. So I had no respect. I had no trust. I had no belief in him. Like none of those things. So I, I knew that if I were to go back to him, it would just be for the sake of aesthetics, just to say we're the perfect family. even though i knew that i would never ever feel the way i used to feel about him after i found out just the sort of person that he ended up being so yeah the marriage broke down in 2018 in a very unfortunate and just very nasty way and i have not um seen my ex, my former husband since 2018 we don't we don't have any financial or emotional support from him in any way my family and i look after the the children 100% yeah so like i said i don't really like to delve into too much detail on this aspect of my life in 2018 i also resigned from my job in the public service and uh, luckily i made some sound financial investments uh, that have enabled me to be able to survive and to stay home with the children for this time i've also had a lot of support from my parents uh so yeah at this point i'm a single mother of two two children and i'm still trying to figure myself out uh the marriage was just it was very i'm not sure how to describe it i think i'd have to go back to my diary just to find the perfect words to describe this but i found that um the marriage <coughs> the marriage changed me it how do i put this in a way that didn't make sense i lost myself in the process of being the perfect wife 
so i forgot what i forgot the things that interested me the things that made me laugh the things that made me happy i was so fixated on being the wife that he needed that i ended up losing myself so right now i'm in the process of self discovery i'm trying to figure out again what i like what i don't like what makes me laugh what doesn't make me laugh and all that that um that all those things that come with self discovery that's where i am right now it i feel like it it has taken me a while to get to this point but i appreciate all i appreciate every step that i've had to take in order to get to the place where i am now i can say that i'm happy i'm in terms of my home life i'm content i have peace of mind i know my children are happy so yeah i can say that i'm i'm content i'm happy So yeah, right now I'm trying to figure out figure this life thing out myself while trying to raise his children. Um my interests include photography, uh videography. Um I enjoy baking. I make a decent cake or two. Um generally speaking, I'm good with my hands. I'm a crafty person. I have a very artistic side to me, which is probably one of the reasons why I do this. So yeah. I'm I'm now looking to get back into the workforce in a more formal setting. Um uh, I have a master's degree in education, so I would really like to put that to good use somewhere in a, an organization where I can make positive change and where my input will be of value and will make a positive contribution to whatever environment I'm going to be in. So yeah, that's pretty much my life history.